Hi everyone, welcome to this reading. Uh, this reading will not resonate for everyone. I'm going to open up to spirit, let spirit bring through a message for someone. Uh, these readings will resonate with a specific person or a small group of people. Now, if you find that this reading doesn't resonate for you, just leave it behind for the people who it's meant for. So um, right off the bat, I'm getting like a past life energy and uh, it feels like spirit has a message for somebody about something that they need to heal from a past life. So we're going to get into that. Okay, so whoever I'm reading for, um, apparently we're not using cards, so <laughs> it, all the energy is right there. So I'm going to try to um, linearly discuss this. Um, whoever I'm reading for, you're the type of person that uh, people feel very comfortable with you. Uh, people gravitate towards you and people really genuinely like you. People, You might even find that some people just really want to help you. They want to do things for you. You've gone through a period of your life where people were not always that great to you, but you've had to learn... Um, to have boundaries. One of the things that you may think, um, it, well, it, it's true, uh, about why you didn't have great boundaries is because of the family that you were raised in. You were always having to look out for everyone else's emotions or take care of other people, right? And that led to uh, not having great boundaries later on in life or um, people taking advantage of you. Now, the thing about that is that, um, and you're going to know who you are if water and music have always played a important part in your life whether it was living around water and um, really liking water or a body of water uh, was important to you and then um, maybe you played music maybe you just really like stockpile the music um, maybe music it changes your moods and gets you into trance you know what I mean um, so that's how you're gonna know who you are not only was it your family in your early life, but this was a pattern, your family, your early life was a pattern carried over from a past life. This past life was spent as a priestess, specifically, not a priest, a priestess. And um, you had a role where you helped many people. You had to administer to people, you had to serve people. And so your natural soul's imprint is that of the giver. Um, the thing about that is that the other side of the giver can often be this very um, controlling aspect as well because we're, we're creatures of balance, right? If we give too much, then there is also an aspect that's going to try to control. If we have too much uh, shame, then we're going to have an aspect that's extremely pr prideful, right? There's always a balance. And um, Spirit wants to bring this forward uh, because as you tighten up your boundaries and you learn who you are and you learn your value, they want you to pay attention to ways that you try to control. Uh, these are not going to be obvious ways. These are going to be very subversive ways that we try to con control things. And I don't necessarily mean manipulative or malicious or anything like that, but because we're trying to control things, this control is mostly ourselves, trying to control ourselves because we have learned not to look externally. We've learned to look internally. And again, that was a lesson that was going to be learned because of this previous life. Um, there's also a wound in this previous life that has left us always yearning for something. Um, maybe you've reached, by the time you've gotten to this reading, maybe you've reached a place of contentment. Um, but there's something about this life and they're not showing me what it is. It actually feels a little bit like it's something that people aren't supposed to know about. It feels a little bit like it's a mystery hidden in the past. Um, and so they, they won't bring the message forward. Um, Hmm. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. Um, to talk about it, to not talk about it, to talk about it, to not talk about it. We'll see if it comes out later. Um, there is this energy of uh, having something that was taken from you in that life. And uh, because it was taken from you in that life, your hope was that you would find it in subsequent lives. You never did because it was, it was never brought back. And so there is this sense of missing something and spirit wants you to begin working on that. Um, simultaneous to working on this control. Stop controlling yourself so much. Allow yourself to take up more space. Allow yourself um, to, <laughs> that was my stomach, <laughs> allow yourself to take up more space. Um, okay, so that does mean something. It's the solar plexus. Um, allow yourself to uh, exert more 
power into the world, right? To be yourself, to step out, to be seen. Um, whatever life this was, there was this huge thing about while you did acts of service, it's almost like you could only speak when spoken to, or you could only, um, I don't know, it's something like that. Like uh, you were, you, you couldn't be you. You know, you couldn't be you. You had to be this thing that people um, viewed as extremely spiritual all the time or followed certain rules and regulations all the time um, in order to serve the people, in order to best uh, administer to the people. And they want you to understand that that leftover energy from that is the control. You've already worked on the giving too much. Now they want you to work on controlling yourself too much be you, be loud, be boisterous, go out, you know what I mean? Be unapologetic about who you are. Stop apologizing all the time. Um, I felt a lot of frustration with that one. So maybe that's like something big for you is that you apologize all the time and your spirits are like, stop it. <laughs> um, there's a little bit also of this uh, sense that we have to learn that whatever that yearning is, we need to address it. We need to address that. And it I'm hearing it doesn't really matter what it was. We need to address that space within us that is also in the solar plexus, I'm hearing. Solar plexus and sacral chakra, I'm hearing. So it might have had... Okay. Uh, and um, to replace that with energy that we give ourselves. Um, you know, a very good simple thing to do is to like sit, uh, focus on yourself, focus on feeling self-love and focus on the seeing the emptiness and focus on filling it with yourself i feel this with more of me i feel this with more of me and feel like that love energy as you do that um there is also this sense that uh you actually have a very good intuition because of this past life and so tapping into the knowledge that this is who you were and i think that whoever i'm speaking to you already know you already know that this was a past life of yours um Tapping into the knowledge of that is actually going to help you open something up in your intuition because there is a third eye block from this life and there's a reason why and they would like you to figure that out and address it. Um, doing certain meditations where you focus on the third eye, this information might come out because it's ready. It's ready for that, that block to be removed. There's also something going on with the seventh chakra they're saying where um, we have a little bit of this energy of being cut off from our divinity, we're, we're reawakening into it, um, but there's an aspect of that divinity that we never quite made peace with. Maybe it is the religion of your birth. Maybe it is the religion that you used to be part of. Maybe it is the religion of the people around you. There's something about divinity where we have a sour taste in our mouth and that needs to be, um, it needs to be healed, right? That needs to be healed. Now, I'm not talking structures and religion, but I am talking about God. I'm talking about, you know, our ideas of what the source is, what that implies. Um, no matter what we call it, no matter what we label it, at the end of the day, we're all talking about the same thing, even if it's something inside of us. And by having an aspect of that diamond, a face of that diamond all scuffed up, it's not going to shine the same way. And so they need that aspect healed in order to flow appropriately. Okay. And uh, some of you are receiving messages and dreams and so they want you to pay attention to your dreams because dreams were a very big part of whatever this life was um, previously in your past. There's strong bonds still to that life and um, that can be negative, that can be positive. Uh, make it work positively for you right? Um, figure out what that was and make it work positively for you. There are negative attachments to that life, like that emptiness and that yearning, um, but you can fill that in and you can start using that past life to your advantage because there is a strong link. Um, there's also something here about, uh, um, no, okay, what is that? Something about dogs. Um, there's something about dogs that's coming through, like a spirit dog or something. Um, crossroads. That, uh, dogs always make me think of Hakate, so crossroads. Something about Greece. Uh, for some of you, there's something... Uh, okay, that may be what it is. It's something about the uh, dream stuff. There is... Oh, okay. So for whoever I'm speaking to, there's actually another life where you served... Um, there's another life that maybe you don't, you know about one, you don't know about another. And um, that life has some very interesting stuff going on in it. That life actually has some sort of, there's like a nuance there. There's a nuance there that carries into this life. 
and it's something that we can't quite place. You may have been told many times in your life that you seem very dark, and this is why, it's that life. There's something going on in that life where we had a role where we were very involved in like the darker feminine mysteries, or maybe we were um, dedicated to it like a dark goddess. Um, I'm almost feeling, so I'm getting two storylines. For some of you, it's someplace like Greece or something like that. Uh, but for others of you, this is like, like a, a tribe sort of thing. There's a darker aspect within your energy and within your aura. The problem with it is that it's caused a lot of setbacks in this life because again, there's a, there's a cord there to that life. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit because of that about the darkness, right? There's nothing wrong with the darkness. It's like a, a lot of people, they adhere to this, like the darkness is bad. We all have darkness and light inside of us, and that's part of us. And um, as soon as we start labeling part of us as bad, we start misunderstanding ourselves. Um, to truly come in alignment with yourself and to truly love yourself, you have to accept both sides of yourself. And that doesn't mean that one side is bad and does bad things. Femininity is dark. It's dark aligned. And so uh, if you were in the past, uh, you were aligned to a dark goddess that's very, very feminine. That's like far extreme end of feminine. And um, because of that, you may have had some more toxic, like Lilith type of traits, right? Um, using your sexuality, if you're a female, you, you know, even if you're a male, you can still have those energies. Using your sexuality to kind of lure people, using your looks to kind of lure people, or even just um, finding that people took advantage of your sexuality. Um, there's this energy of like this Lilithian scorpionic sort of uh, energy that's coming through from that life for me. So for some of you, um, you know, if it goes way back, if it's even like, you know, um, Babylonian times, things like that, maybe it was like being a sacred prostitute and that pattern carried over in this life. There's um, something here about two lives as being dedicated to the gods or dedicated to a god or a goddess where um, both of these lives are affecting you. You know about one, um, but you don't know about the other. In this one, you don't know about the void that is left inside of you that needs to be addressed and spirit saying in this side, you don't know about the darkness that was involved in it because of the nature of the dark feminine um, that you've had to overcome. But now that you know about that dark feminine, it may be easier for you to heal traces of that and to uh, make peace with it because you have to make peace with this aspect of yourself um, rather than denying it. Um, and so that's a message for somebody. Uh, I'm going to leave that there. If this resonates for you, please hit that like button. Feel free to leave me a comment and until next time.